Hey, everybody. Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours. I am your host, Jinx, and joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, got a lot going on today. I'm going to just as a quick shout out here, drop a link uh, in the sidebar chat. Uh, this is uh, Ben's update request on the output of the original creds proposal that we uh, voted down to get a little more time for refinement on. Um, he is asking for input there. So for all of you who are involved in those conversations, please stop by and uh, drop some input in there. Uh, but we'll start off with uh, community updates Oops, from Zach. Hello, hello. Yeah, so definitely, please, if you had a, if you had a reason to vote no on creds before, please go in and read that and drop any information or reasons why you might vote no again. Um, the idea here is to get it to a state where we think it's going to pass before we put it up for proposal um, and we address everybody's concerns. So now's the time to do it as opposed to when we put it up to a vote. Um, and that's in the forum. So thank you, Jinx, for calling that out. Um, I think one of the big ones is Retro PGF is kicked off and uh, it's ongoing. You've got about a week left. But if you've done any work for the ecosystem since February of last year, um, please go over and fill out a Retro PGF form. Uh, most people are eligible. And if you have any questions, you can DM me or you can join uh, office hours later today. And uh, I can I can answer any questions you might have or walk you through. Um, what else? <clears throat> We're having some wallet uh, issues. So if you have been having a problem with the official pocket wallet lately, please open a help desk ticket. We've made some up uh, some updates in the last 24 hours, but uh, we expect to have everything fixed today, I believe. So um, appreciate all the people who have uh, posted about that. Breezy, you're unmuted. If you want to just quickly mute yourself, that would be great. Um, and other things. I think those are the, the the core ones right now that people need to be updated on. Definitely a focus on retro PGF. Um, that's it. Fantastic. And uh, I was encouraged to join retro PGF as well. I, I recommend uh, everybody who has uh, made a, a documentable contribution to the protocol and community. Uh, jump in there. See if you're re uh, relevant or valid. Um, Shane, protocol updates. Yeah, uh, really excited to uh, say that Monday is the day of uh, public testnet. Um, the final PR has been uh, has been submitted uh, and is uh, in review. And so with that, uh, basically all the pieces are there so folks can uh, folks would be able to join. Um, uh, there's also been a lot of work on just getting all the tooling and all the uh, uh, all the um, documentation right so people can kind of seamlessly join and start participating um yeah it'll be pretty cool we're going to be doing some load tests and things of that nature once uh once folks get onboarded and uh so yeah monday is pretty much the day i'm working with uh uh obviously uh ads and marketing to uh figure out what it you know uh what all we can kind of launch uh i also do have um uh, a lot of information that I've uh, put up for the team to review. So right now, uh, protocol and PNF is just reviewing uh, what what I'm calling a Shannon overview, which really goes over each actor and allows you to get a high level understanding of how the ecosystem as a whole is is going to work and uh, what Shannon is opening the door to. So a lot of cool stuff um, right at the tail end of uh, kind of. The last internal things before making a lot of things public. So really excited about that and getting folks onboarded with uh, testnet starting Monday. Nice. Uh, gateway updates. Let's start with uh, Olshansky. Anything from uh, the Grove side that needs to be out there? Yeah. Uh, before I get into Grove updates, uh, just a couple of things I can add to what Fane said about uh, things from the protocols side. Uh, so with this testnet, just in terms of like setting expectations and context for everyone, uh, the where what the protocol team is focused on right now is uh, Pocket Network's core utility, right? The relay, the scalability, the claims, the proofs, relay mining, all those things, and tooling to get visibility into it. There's a lot of things, uh, let's call it vanilla blockchain things, such as unbonding periods and minimum stake amounts and maximum stake amounts that are more um, around discussion 
and are less bucket specific, but are uh, key, key primitives that we need to actually launch a protocol, those aren't in place yet. So this is just, you know, we'll keep sending out more information about this, uh, but just letting the community know that this is how we're moving forward with our releases and iteration in public. That's uh, just some extra additions uh, for protocol updates. That Fantastic. is not going to be worth them. Uh, from gross perspective, uh, not too many updates. The two major updates are that OP BNB is live. Uh, it is a rollup on top of BNB, um, you know, to enable what rollups uh, usually promise, scalability, et cetera. Uh, and the other thing that's live is uh, Celestia archival testnet. So we've had mainnet Celestia archival uh, out for a few weeks now, and now we've got testnet as well. And to my knowledge, I believe uh, the Pocket Network ecosystem is the only one that's actually running uh, Celestia Archival nodes as of now, which is a huge achievement for everyone here. Beautiful. That's it for mine. Thank you, sir. Blade, any uh, Nodes updates? Hey, uh, no particular Nodes update, but uh, shifting gears into kind of like being the consoles of the gateway server as well. Um, looks like people are, are able to deploy the gateway server just fine. Uh, I just got some word from Chainstack that they were able to deploy it in production and push it up to 2.5k requests per second, and that's been no hassle for them. So that's really great news. Uh, I look forward to all the other gateway operators and you know how they're able to integrate and push the limits of the gateway server. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a, a pretty uh, pretty respectable amount of throughput uh, with a minimal amount of effort. Uh, porters, y'all guys uh, have any updates uh, this week from the gateway side? Yeah, <clears throat> thanks, Jinx. Um, basic updates coming through is that um, we've uh, we're setting our launch date for uh, five thirty one uh, end of this month, last day of the month. Um, and this is going to coincide with Tycho Mainnet coming online. Um, and want to give a big shout out and thanks to Dermot um, for helping amplify the signal and getting uh, node operators involved. Uh, thanks to Node Fleet and Validatrium and QSpider and um, a couple others. I'm sorry, I'm not mentioning y'all, but I've seen a lot of operators jump on to uh, signal their interest in supporting Tycho as we get launched. So. It's been really encouraging. Um, and I think that's it for right now. Um, made through the first round of QA testing or testing live and broad and things are going well. So we're just gonna polish that up by next week and we should be good to go. Fantastic. Great seeing all these uh, new gateways bringing additional services and uh, traffic in. Obviously great for the whole ecosystem. Is there anyone else here that's working on a gateway that we don't already have uh, in rotation that needs to provide updates? Kemp here from developer Dow Jinx. There we go. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, we're working our way so towards um, sort of getting things live and deployed so we can start testing. I owe Dermot um, and Jack a response uh, on a few things. We've got a bit of a contributor lull at the moment. Uh, OX Fresh, who is doing the um, infrastructure uh, support socket, has had a load of our personal stuff come up. So it slowed us down a little bit on getting that testing done. But we're hoping over the next couple of weeks we can we can get that stuff live um, and have some more sort of meaningful updates on timelines and when we'll be going sort of out to public for you guys in the next few weeks. Beautiful. I love to hear it. At some point in time, I expect the gateway segment will take uh, a long time in each call. <laughs> uh, Shane, did you have uh, some other, did you want to go over some of the other conversations that we'd had already uh, regarding things like uh, uh, Gandalf and other uh, Shannon architectural questions? Uh, yeah, uh, Gandalf wise, expect a proposal very, very soon. Um, uh, by the end of this week, I start. I, I plan to start uh, drafting it. Uh, hopefully tomorrow. Um, yeah, hope 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 to get that out. 
within basically, you know, hopefully out next week and give folks a time, a chance to talk about it and discuss it. But there's a lot of, I, I think there's a lot of benefits to uh, changing the max chains here in Morse, um, kind of before we, we get into the craziness of uh, migrating to Shannon. Um, and there also, would also be some uh, potential upside with uh, allowing more people to join the network in general on the supplier side, uh, kind of running up to Moors or running up to Shannon as well. So, yeah, definitely expect that in the next, uh, I want to say, week. Um, but that's high on my priority because we, we should be taking steps right now to uh, start moving the ecosystem towards Shannon. And, and this is going to be uh, this is going to be a low hanging fruit for us to do um, low hanging fruit, but it will, you know, it'll take, uh, it'll definitely require providers to organize uh, uh, how they, how they are currently doing staking um, because it's uh it's going to be a little bit of a different mechanism uh, with how they'd want to balance their nodes across chains. So, but better to get all that out of the way now uh, so that when we launch Shannon, we can just focus on Shannon and not uh, uh, kind of no, you know, uh, not QoS changes from uh, uh, needing to change the max change parameter. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in agreement that that sort of a change, uh, assuming we voted in, would uh, be better handled sooner rather than later. We'll have a lot to do when Shannon's going live. Yeah, absolutely. And I did want to share um, one more. Uh, for uh, like two weeks ago, um, there was a uh, 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 when we launched the developer tooling for uh, running your own local net of Shannon. Uh, we also released kind of a blog post that talked about the Shannon uh, test net roadmap. So I encourage folks to check that out. Um, we've we've got a bunch of different phases, uh, kind of planned where we want to, um, uh, you know, focus on certain things in in different phases of the test net. And so with the kind of kicking things off, uh, kind of in this alpha phase, um, yeah, we're we're really wanting to see things break. Uh, you know, test mm -hmm. things out to the point that they break, and then uh, that'll give us insight to obviously make uh make all the changes that are needed to make this uh a, really a bulletproof system so um just wanted to also mention that with a uh, discussion around launching on uh monday check out the that blog post and get a good idea of of what this test net is really going to be about um we'll we'll be launch or releasing some more information as long uh, along with the launch itself on monday but just wanted to point that out be right back setting up a CrowdStrike server. <laughs> uh, any uh, other, uh, this is open floor at this point. We've gone through our, up, our uh, normal update cycle. So anybody else with any kind of question, input, suggestion, uh, you name it, it's open floor. Hey, uh, we just wanted to announce again that we have already set up again the part of the geodata, thanks to notice. So now in pocket scan, you can see where the gateways are and what's the latency to each of them from each of the chains that Nudis is handling. We have reached out every other gateway, I think. So we hope that we will have a bigger picture and more complete as soon as they start sending us uh, their data from the gateway server so uh, as soon as we have it we will have it on the site too just that. beautiful and and any updates uh, from the AI working group Ramira uh, we are almost there I think that we will have a working draft for final draft for the end of the week and I think that the idea is to to share it with the broader audience uh, by the end of the month, but it's all on time. Absolutely. And I saw yeah. that uh, Pocket Square was, uh, um, or the, essentially you were calling for contributors to to help move uh, Pocket Square forward as an open source offering. Uh, if you want to drop that link in the sidebar chat as well, I'm, I'm sure that uh, 
anybody with some spare development cycles would be interested in jumping in there. Sure, we'll do. Okay. Other thoughts, questions, compliments? Uh, I'm trying to, to get pushing for a lot of the other gateway operators to provide those endpoints to pocket scan as well uh, for the quality of service data. The standard is open, right? So it sticks to this specific standardization for quality of service data for pocket scan to scrape. And it's actually quite easy for gateway servers operators to provide that data. Um, for example, I'm pushing chain stack to also consider providing that data. Um, and all they have really have to do is provide like three endpoints, or endpoints depending on how many reaches they run on. And then from there, it just kind of like taps in and works. So while Nodis is the first one to integrate with pocket scan, uh, it should be minimal effort for them to also tap in. Is there a link or uh, contact information or something else that we could uh, share uh, in the chat to have them go to for that? That's a really good question. I think each, I mean, trying to think about it from a holistic ecosystem view, uh, each analytical tool in Pocket, uh, they will have different ways on how they will want to do that. So I'll probably defer to Pocket Scan on how uh, they will like gateway operators to reach out. Fantastic. Do we have a, I don't think we do. Maybe it would be an idea, uh, Zach or anyone relevant, to have a specific uh, data channel in the Discord to coordinate on uh, data sharing and analytics and endpoints, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'll well, coordinate with... Uh... Oh, go on, Shane. I, I was just going to say, we... we I... I, I don't know if you really want this to be like an open channel where endpoints are being shared or anything. I think that should be shared just directly with uh, uh, pocket scan. Um, but uh, we do have uh, we do have um, different channels dedicated to gateways, so we could potentially utilize those. But uh, anyway, Zach, just here you go. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, honestly, Kemp, uh, I, I completely, I, I am the proud suggester of the Pocket Square name uh, and based on exactly that. So uh, I, I would, if if I had a Pocket Square that was in that blue with the Pocket logo on it, I would absolutely use it with my jacket. So I support this idea. Uh, Blade asks, is there any update for the uh, base bridge uh, adoption? Yes, that is a good ass question. Uh, we had a lot going with that. And I've seen a couple of different uh, work group channels that I'm in um, discussing progress on that, but I don't want to make any statements out of turn. Um, can anyone um, provide any updates on that? I know PNF, you guys were working with uh, one of the base teams. Um, any word there? Yeah, I, I don't know if we checks on the call, but um, either way, I, I can give a high level update. So, we, yes, so, so actually, there technically is Wrap Pocket um, available on base already. And we were planning to go ahead, even though we realized it would cause some migration kind of uh, work ahead of the Shannon upgrade. But we saw the benefits of doing so. However, Wojciech has been doing some, some awesome work behind the scenes. And actually, he realized, hey, wait a second, um, we can basically move to base, but also enable moving to Arbitrum and even Solana pre-Shannon if we do some work on the back end up front to move to a standard called XERC20, which just cleans up the whole back end and makes it more scalable and uh, makes it a lot easier once we get to Shannon. So I guess the, the downside is that the launch on base is going to be delayed until hopefully no later than maybe the third week of June um, as we're running an audit to um, put the code that Wojciech has actually developed, which, which is awesome. Um, and it should be pretty straightforward as this similar, most of this code has been audited before. And, and then to launch on base, um, we have lined up Arrakis, which is like a liquidity manager um, who'd manage all liquidity, would take some of the DAO's liquidity currently on Ethereum, move it to base, get that up and running. And once that's up and running as well, we can also uh, look to explore moving to Solana as well. So yeah, long story short, it's 
frustrating that we've had to have the delay, but the good news is that there's now a pathway to Solana that was going to be pretty hard to do before Shannon. And secondly, we kind of can enable Pocket moving to any other chain now and not have to worry about the the same migration risks and tech debt that we're going to incur if we didn't do it this way. So it's um, some short-term pain for some long-term gain, gain, I guess. But um, yeah, hoping to have a, some, some more updates about that in the coming weeks. Beautiful. Big fan of uh, what Votech's been doing uh, um, and and super excited to see uh, some of the contributions that he's already bringing to the table. Thanks, Sam. Other contributions, questions, thoughts? Uh, Blade said, so Pocket is adopting XERC20. It sounds like that's uh, correct. Yeah, exactly. And I know there are going to be some folks who are super excited about uh, W Pocket on Solana because they already have a ton of resources there uh, gambling on Solana shitcoins. So, you know. Yeah, and and also this is a, a technical thing. And again, I think this is a voyage X jam, so I don't want to take this from him and I'll, I'll go above my pay grade pretty quickly. But um, actually the, the beauty of xerc20 is that technically every pocket deployment on every chain is native and the idea being that it's native because that that actual um the kind of the minting and burning of that token on that respective chain is controlled by the DAO. um unlike a wrap token which technically is completely permissionless anyone can do and it's hard to control how much is minted and so on and so forth people can just bridge it so this kind of gives more control it has more kind of um, I guess fail safes in place. We can agree how much can be minted a certain amount of, amount of time and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, technically it would be, I guess in the way Wojciech would describe it, even the pocket on Solana will be native, even though it's clearly not the the native the native chain. It just means that we're controlling that. So it's uh, we kind of move away from calling it wrap pocket. Wrap pocket will just be what we have on Ethereum as of now, and then we'll actually set up a migration contract so everyone can move their wrap pocket to um, XERC20 kind of pocket which can be used on any chain beautiful and one one other uh just cool point as you look into the xerc20 ecosystem there's a lot of people uh building um building onto uh this kind of uh token system so yeah there's 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 a lot of cool projects working on it. There's a lot of cool projects integrating it. And then, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like it's got a lot of, a lot of future um, uh, adoption uh, that's currently underway. So a lot of cool things in that area as well. Restrictive monetary policy in my blockchain? Ooh. Okay. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Just come off mute and shout it out. You are also welcome to type into the sidebar chat for anybody who's new to the call. Uh, I will read it out for you like a trained this, monkey. This is going to be a much longer conversation, so maybe I'll signal this for, for next week because I'll actually have to drop off in the next five to ten minutes. But um, I've been putting together a proposal um, with some input from the kind of community and uh, and and even the protocol team about increasing the DAO take. Um, I understand that could be quite sensitive to people. Of course, that would have an effect on the, the share going to suppliers and node operators. But the key reasons for doing so, I think we can actually work out in, in public and flesh out around um, maybe a timing, a cap on this, and also kind of aligning on how impactful we think this will be. Um, the key reason is to have more funds for the DAO to deploy, for, for incentives, for, for building of all kinds, and for anything that will drive impact towards, um, I guess, Shannon and the Pocket ecosystem as a whole. And I guess just a, and, and there's actually two sides to this. There's one direct reason, and I guess, Shane, you can maybe talk about this in a second. This is actually one of the coolest things I think about the new Shannon economics is the plan to include a part revenue share for any maintainer or developer of any of the data sources that Pocket supports. 
So think about that from Ethereum at the top to actually new chains, rollups, even actually particular indexes, and particularly as Pocket Moves is supporting uh, open source LLMs, actually, this is a native revenue model for every open source developer. Actually, if your model gets model data source, whatever it is, get some usage on Pocket, you get a share of that. And it actually also increases the incentive for every ecosystem and even every open source developer to build a gateway to their own product because that can help them drive volume, um, which again, increases their revenue share. Um, so I think this is a really cool innovation, which again, I'll, I'll let Shane tap into more, but um, in the shorter term, short to medium term, actually to make that work, um, it's, it's likely going to be easier for the DAO to uh, sorry, for PNF to manage that and to kind of pay out those that revenue share until we kind of figure out a scalable model for paying out these maintainers. Um, because obviously dealing with potentially hundreds of payment payments every day or every week isn't particularly scalable up front. We need to kind of figure out the guardrails and the risks. Um, and the second piece is just so we have more to fund incentives for test nets, um, integration bounties for for the LLMs, for example, um, but all the different kind of surrounding related projects that people will be aware of once the, the light paper comes out in the next kind of couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, I, I guess there's a whole bunch of incentives that you can think of. And we'll, we'll, I'll share more about this in the forum and we can talk about it there, but I just wanted to signal this is something we can feel could really drive a lot more value to pocket. It does kick down the can, the can down the road a little bit longer of, say, having any overall immediate cuts to um, kind of the current mint rate. Um, but I think this feels much more aligned in terms of we can actually then redeploy that into what we all believe is the most impactful uses of that pocket for the ecosystem across um, every aspect, protocol, ecosystem, adoption, and so on. So yeah, I'll, I'll pause there, see if anyone has any comments, um, uh, kind of questions, and then I'd also maybe Shane might want to jump in around data champions too. Zatar asks in chat, uh, what percentage for the, po for the DAO take is being considered? <laughs> So I think for the DAO take, I, I think bumping the current share up from 10% to 15% would be would be great. I think it would be even greater to have 20%, even on a temporary basis, say maybe saying that six months post-Shannon, but this is something we can align on with the community. I think, um, but say it's even that smaller piece of 5%. I think the data champions that Shane is pioneering in terms of economics, the way he's thinking about it, that at least 10%, um, of the revenue share going to them would be really powerful. So actually, all in all, if you take 10% to data champions and 5% to the DAO, that would be, um, yeah, an increase of 5%, the 15% to 25%. But I'm sure there's a, a, a zone of acceptability that we can all kind of align on. But that's kind of the, the high-level thinking. Yeah. And I, I guess in, in terms of pure numbers there, that would mean for the DAO, just purely increasing its um, its take that would be roughly a million pocket a month to deploy up from the current current roughly six hundred and sixty thousand gets per month, and then the other piece would be going to uh, straight back to those open source maintainers. Yeah, jump in, Shane. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to point out that there uh, I've I've gone through uh, what what champions are in a past um, uh, past uh builders call also uh we had a twitter space uh the other week where i was able to give a little bit more on the champion so um yeah won't won't go too much into that but uh doing that in morse as well uh could drive a lot of excitement um from other ecosystems um that mac uh that along with max chains uh changing from 15 to 1 uh, would also mean that those ecosystem node runners could uh, reasonably jump into pocket and uh, support RPC for their new, uh, uh, you know, for their chain. Um, so there's an incentive for that chain to uh, drive their uh, their users to pocket because the you know foundation themselves and who's building uh, the the client work itself. Um, would be able to generate revenue from it. So that aligns uh, the incentive between Pocket and the foundation of really any chain that we support. Um, and then on top of that, if with a max chains of being one, uh, that means that then that ecosystem could reasonably join Pocket uh, just to stake on their, um, you know, on their on their own chain, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't have to run fourteen other chains. Um, they would need to run, uh, if they want network average, they would need to run their node in three regions. 
Um, but uh, I'm sure there would be some power users inside that ecosystem that, uh, you know, may want to may want to do that. But anyways, it, it kind of opens up uh, what we can actually do with these ecosystems, even in Morse, which for me, that's what I think is exciting. And, the, you know, we the more real, genuine connections and incentives that we can have with these ecosystems, uh, that's just a win for Pocket in my mind. So uh, it's cool that we might not have to wait for Shannon to uh, really start tapping into some of these economic uh, incentives and potentially do some of it in uh, in Morse with uh, PNF kind of uh, helping manage where the protocol isn't quite yet able to do in a uh, autonomous fashion. So. And y'all wanted to talk uh, in next week's ecosystem call or in a different call? Um, I, I I don't know, Dermot. I'll let you take this if if you wanted to have a yeah. call on this. I, I, I think it'll be helpful once we have the the numbers and a discussion going in the community. So I think um, probably aiming for next week sounds good. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Other thoughts, questions? Might uh, pop in and add. I've been having some, just had a great conversation with Ben, been working with Zach quite a bit on different community initiative things. And I think we're about to double down and jump a little bit deeper with some different uh, expanded analytics and other initiatives and things. And to do that, we're really keen to kind of grab a few key community members one on one and get your guys' feedback and start to kind of consolidate. That is a little bit of community research. So if you want to reach out to me and I'll probably be reaching out to a few different people, um, just wanted to put that out there that we're kind of keen to collect everyone's, you know, idea of what the next few months look like, what your kind of vision, how you see different ideas and, and things like that to attract developer talent um, and just to kind of grow the ecosystem from a community perspective. So keep on the lookout for that and really excited to, to dive deeper. Fantastic. Anyone else? Feel free to jump off mute and jump in. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, basically Pocket Radar is feature complete. Uh, the, the Explorer that was in the socket, uh, we are finishing the last uh, updates with the uh, with the new channel, so we can also integrate channel to the to the Explorer as well. Uh, I, I will be giving more updates in the forum and, and other channels. So yeah, feel free to give any feedback and take a look. Beautiful. Uh, the the link for that is in the sidebar chat now. It's staging.pocketradar.io. So. Feel free to give that a, an eyeball and provide feedback. We are 20 minutes out from the top of the hour. If you've got something that uh, we haven't talked about yet or something that you want to let the community know about, then uh, now's the time. Well, it seems like we are reaching the end of uh, topics for discussion this week. Uh, for anybody who hasn't been looking at the sidebar chat, um, Blade had asked early on uh, 
if anyone uh, in this ecosystem is going to be at consensus. Uh, and Kemp had mentioned that uh, developer DAO has a discount code for builders uh, for anyone who might be interested on that. So if you were debating the idea of going to consensus, uh, now you can get it at a discount and uh, apparently hang out and party with Blade, who said he's covering everyone's drinks while you're in town. Oh, he already left. That's even funnier. So everyone, make sure you DM him and ask him about that uh, this afternoon. Okay, well, it looks like we're wrapped up for the day. We will see you all again, same time, same channel next week, and uh, talk more about the, uh, the proposed uh, tokenomics. Uh, coming up uh, as a focus of that conversation. But uh, for now, thanks for coming.